Hello, my name's Oliver and welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're going to be sorting out Jolene's heads. Now this is a 425, 18 horsepower, two CV engine. They made these from 1963 until 1970. And previously, Jolene had a voltage issue. With the voltage issue, of course, comes a really bad spark and a bad spark creates carbon buildup. Uh, this carbon buildup's common in a lot of engines, especially like early direct injection engines, like um, some of the first VW direct injection engines get worse carbon buildup than this. But this is pretty bad because we've got teeny tiny exhaust ports and teeny tiny intake ports and it doesn't take a lot to clog them up. Now carbon buildup is bad for a few reasons. One, it can prevent valve sealing. And so if you don't, obviously, if your valves don't seal, you don't have any compression. And so you've got exhaust gases and fuel leaking out of the cylinder and you're not going to get your enough power. It can also create hot spots, which can create uh, what's called pre-ignition, which is when your fuel goes off before it's supposed to, um, or rather when your fuel ignites before it's supposed to. And that creates problems as well. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna pop the valves out, we're gonna clean out the heads, we're gonna clean the valves, and then we're gonna put it all back together and we're gonna lap the valves in so the valves seal properly into the valve seats. And uh, yeah, you can see all the inside of a 2CV head. And then by the end of today, we'll have fresh heads ready to go back on our engine. And if you can't tell, I'm sat on the front of the chassis with the, uh, with the bonnet catch in between my legs <laughs> because I want the light because it's a bit grim today. It's one of those days when it's bright, but it's grim. And that's why I've got sunglasses on. I'm also sat on my overalls. Let's move these out of the way. And I need a center pop. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to center pop the heads uh, one and two. And the reason why we're going to do that is so that we know that this rocker goes back on this side and this one goes back on that side. And when we take everything apart, we're going to keep them in their respective uh, kind of groupings. So that's one, you see the mark there. One, two, one. So that makes it really cl clear and easy. We've got one, one, two, two. And then what we're going to do, is 12 mil spanner. I'm going to pull back this spring and take the bolts out. There we go. Now these being Citroen are a bit weird because they're spring loaded. So you've got a spring here and a washer. So you've got to make sure that this doesn't ping off. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove it as we take the bolt out, and we're gonna keep it all together. And then, so we're gonna do that. And then that way, It's all together as a unit. I'm going to pop it like that. Same again. There we go. And here it comes. There we go. If we keep it all together, then it's not going to ping apart and it can go back in as a unit. There we go. Our next job is to take this central stud out now. So I've got two manifold bolts and uh, stud removal is exactly the same as removing one of these studs. So just two bolts, tighten them into each other and then that just winds out like that. Super simple. 
and I'm going to leave my nuts on because they'll, uh, they'll help me get it back in later. So I don't currently own a spring compressor. Well, I do because I've just made one. But I, don't, I haven't needed a, a spring compressor in my life up until now. And it's a lot of money to spend on a tool that I've never needed. Now, to make your own spring compressor, you're going to need three things. One, a bit of tube that you've cut a window in and squidged. All right. Secondly, a very old and reliable G-clamp. You want a really good quality one because you, it cannot slip. And it has to be quite big because it needs to go all the way around the head. And the third thing that you're going to need is a glamorous assistant. Dad, can I borrow you a minute? Good morning. Right. <laughs> so, right, so in here, there's two collets and they're like little cones. And so basically what you're doing is, okay, it's easier to show you when, I, when we remove the thing. It takes two people because you've got to compress it by hand and also stop the clamp moving. Right. Hold it out. Little screw out. All right, you can talk. Yep. <laughs> One. Call it. One. Got it? That's one. Two. There we go. Right. And now that, yeah, that all comes off as one unit. So what I've got is the bottom seat and then this two springs, there's an inner spring and an outer spring, and then the top. And you'll notice that this top is conical. And here is a collet, and a collet is basically half a cone. It's like a co half cone shaped bead. And basically these sit in this ridge on the valve, like that and the tension from the spring just holds them in and that stops, that connects your valve to your engine and stops your valves falling into your pistons. That shouldn't be black at all. That should be like nice and shiny and lovely. Right, now, and that's the good one. <laughs> so we're gonna put our inlet valve spring and, and everything all together. And we're gonna keep it all together with our collets like that. Nope, nope, nope. It wasn't seated properly. Why are you grabbing? Dad, I've got it, I've got it. Right, hang on. There we go. It's one of those jobs where you need like five hands. And out she pops. So we have our inner spring, our outer spring, our top, and our, come on, valve. And our bottom. Look at that carbon build up. It's like a Christmas tree of carbon. That's terrible. And you can imagine how much that messes up flow. So once you've had the voltage issue and it's not running right because it's all built up with carbon, it's not going to run right. And this was the important thing 
about not just sorting out the spark plug, but actually sorting out the engine itself. Because there was no point me putting it all back together when your intake valve looks like it, it belongs in a reef. So, the next thing to do is clean it all out. And to do that, I'm going to get in there with a, a little bit of a screwdriver and kind of scrape the loose stuff away. And then we're going to put it in the sonic cleaner. So you can see there's carbon build up here. There's carbon build up in the back there, which is a crucial point because as gas flows out your engine, it has to flow up that chamber there and out of here. And you can see there's also a lot of carbon build up here. So I'm going to chip as much of that away as I can, gently, of course. And uh, that then helps us later on. And Dad's draining the uh, Sonic Cleaner. I get quite a lot of Sonic Cleaner questions. Since I did the Sonic Cleaner review, I, uh, I've been getting lots of emails about it. Basically, anytime we use it, we clean it out first because if it's messy and gooey inside, it stops working as well. And if you clean it out every time you use it, 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 like, it doubles in its efficiency. Look at all this carbon now. That was in one valve stopping exhaust gases escaping from the cylinder. And that's just me stabbing it with a bit of a screwdriver. It's not even a proper clean. You know when you watch like Victorian um, films and like read Charles Dickens books and they talk about chimney sweeps and stuff like that? That's what this is. You're just chimney sweeping your engine. And you can imagine like all this carbon gets really, really hot. And because your engine can't breathe, it's like, uh, it's like when you've got a cold and you're congested and you can't breathe because you're all bunged up. It's like that, but for your engine. But the, the difference is that because the hot exhaust gases can't escape, it just builds up and builds up and builds up more carbon, bunging all the ports up even more and making it run really badly. Another place that two CVs get carbon build up is here. Now you can see there's a dint as well there. See that dint? Something has dropped down into the cylinder previously and, uh, and damaged the head doesn't seem to be there anymore, and it doesn't seem to have actually damaged anything else, fortunately, but uh, yeah. It's nothing to worry about because there doesn't seem to be any damage to the piston and there's no damage to the, the cylinder or anything, which dodged a bullet there. And believe it or not, this isn't the worst carbon buildup you'll see. Like I say, if you, if you Google, um, Direct injection VW carbon buildup. You'll uh, <laughs> you'll see some shocking things. Forward, I was also had carbon buildup problems. It used to be a big problem with direct injection engines, where they direct uh, directly inject fuel into the cylinder. The the fuel injectors like kind of where the spark plug is here, and it squirts the fuel straight in rather than squirting the fuel on the back of the intake valve. And modern direct injection engines have one injector in the cylinder and one on the back of the valve. So that it washes all the carbon off the valve and helps to uh, prevent it. Still a thing, but it's not as bad of a thing. All right, so I'm just cleaning all of the uh, carbon off the valve first with a Stanley knife. I know it's a, it seems a bit uh, unorthodox, but there's that much build-up. We're going to clean it off, off properly, but obviously, like, there's that much... There's that much goo and build-up. And all of this carbon would have glowed, um, like, red hot. And so obviously, as soon as your fuel enters your engine, it's, it's being burnt without even waiting for the spark plug, which messes with your timing, which means that you're not actually producing power. And because this, there's no way this exhaust valve was sealing like this. So when your piston comes up to do your compression stroke, 
it's just running out of the exhaust valve because it's not even a sealed container. Because that's what an engine is after all. An engine's an air pump, so it needs to be able to breathe. And it's a, it's a fast burn, it's not an explosion, but it's a fast burn in a sealed container. And the fact that it's sealed is what forces the piston back. The more compression you have in that chamber, which is dictated by things like your fuel quality and, and your engine and all of that. So the more that you can compress the, the fuel air mixture in that chamber before you ignite it, the more power you get. That's how normal aspirated engines make power. But if it's not a sealed container, then it's barely functioning as an engine. So. The good news is it's really easy to sort out. You know, it's not the end of the world. Right, now we've got all the loose stuff off it, we can clean this up properly. There we go. In it goes. Just gotta wait for the water to warm up now. Then we can pop it in. So the way I'm gonna clean the valves is to chuck them up in the pillar drill. Now, if you're gonna use this method of cleaning valves, it is kind of the, the most efficient way then you need to be really careful because if you look at your valve, obviously ours is in three colours, but you'll see a lighter area and then a definite line and a darker area. Now, this darker area is where you want to clamp your valve. And you don't want to do it too tight, obviously, but whatever you do, you don't want to scratch this area because that's where your valve guide lives. And if you scratch this, that'll leave to leaky valve guides, a smoky engine and premature wear and then you're gonna end up rebuilding your heads again in two minutes. So the best thing to do is just proceed with caution. discoloration in the valve is because the valve has been getting hot in an ununiform pattern because of the carbon buildup. So one side of the valve has got hotter than the other side. because the valves are made in two pieces, the bottom piece and the stem and they're friction welded together and then machined in one piece. So basically the two pieces welded together and then all machined together and what happens is where the join is the cut, you get a carbon soak into the weld. It's, imp it's important that you don't s sand this edge here and here too much because that's the edge that makes a seal between the valve and the valve guide. So make it clean, but don't be super aggressive in this area. Notice I'm using paper to clean the valve, not a cloth, because anytime you're using any sort of anything to clean anything on a rotating thing, never use a cloth, because if it catches a thread, it can actually pull your hand in with it. Also, no rings or watches or bracelets or anything like that. You'll notice a lot in videos, I even roll my sleeves up to here. 
and uh, the reason I do that is with any sort of power tool, it, uh, it pulls you in. These Citroen valves are really odd. They've got a, a lip here. It kind of, it comes down, right? It comes down and then it has a lip and then it has the valve seat. It's really bizarre. I think it's because of the way that the head flows. That, that's how they designed it, but uh, it's a bit odd. It's very Citroen. <laughs> there, there are probably complicated Citroen reasons for it. It, it probably like sticks to com some kind of Citroen logic, but. So we now have two shiny valves and we've been really careful to stay away from the seat to clean it up, but not apply any pressure and not remove any material from the seat. It's vital because without that, you don't get a good seal. And uh, that's what we're really aiming for. So the next step when the um, head is finished cooking will be to remove it, clean off any excess carbon because it won't have got it all. Carbon removal is a, a really complicated process. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. You can do it with like steam. There's chemical methods of doing it. A sonic cleaner does a really good job of doing it while you're doing something else, but it won't get all of it. It's just not going to happen. It's, it's too baked on. I mean, you can see with the exhaust valve, like the, the heat from the carbon has actually discolored the valve. That's how hot it got. And this is an engine that has seven to one compression, which is less than any 2CV6 or anything. A 2CV6 I think has nine to one compression or eight and a half to one compression. So, you know, seven to one compression is very little. There's, there's nothing that's been made in the last 40 years that has that little compression, except for maybe like a series three Land Rover. So there's not a lot of heat comparatively to most engines going on in this engine and yet it's it's got it's got that hot that it's turned a really high quality valve dark so that just gets across how much damage carbon can do and how much you can upset the running of your engine you know you can imagine that exhaust valve glowing at 5000 rpm um the the red line of a, a 425 18 horsepower is 5500 rpm it's 500 higher than a 2CV6. So you can imagine on the motorway doing 90 kilometers an hour, that valve is flying up and down, glowing red hot, which is not what you want. Right, it's worth pointing out that this carbon is really carcinogenic and horrible for you. So if you're gonna go to the loo, make sure you wash your hands before you go to the loo if you're not wearing gloves. And even if you are wearing gloves, it's worth still washing your hands. Anytime you're in a workshop, always wash your hands before you go to the loo. The last thing you want is, you know, health problems. And if you are going to be grinding it or anything like that, if you've got a really built up engine, make sure that you wear a mask and adequate eye protection and stuff, because you don't want this stuff anywhere near you. The, the ideal thing would be to wear workshop gloves, but I don't have any, I, you know, like the thick black latex gloves. I simply don't have any. I can't get them in France big enough for my hands. But uh, yeah, it's really not good for you. So make sure that you protect yourself from uh, from the horrible carbon black. So even with all of that, it's still got plenty of carbon deposits on. Now these brushes I get from um, from like the local supermarket. They're for cleaning barbecues, I think. I've said it on this uh, channel before. They're, they're really cheap. They're like, I don't know, a euro for a box of three. So that's removed the lion's share of the carbon buildup. Now the next thing to do is break out the Dremel because you saw how difficult it was for us to remove the carbon buildup from the valves. It's the same story inside the head. And what we're going to do is we're going to gently remove the build the built up carbon. I'm not suggesting that you port your engine at all. Um, in France, you're not allowed to port your engine, but if kind of some of the casting lines kind of got in the way while you were, you know, while you were removing the carbon, then yes, that would potentially, allegedly, um, help, you know, performance and fuel economy and, and make your engine perform better. I'm not suggesting you do that. And I'm not suggesting you port match the exhaust either. I'm not suggesting you do that. But 
kind of if 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 casting lines got in the way while you are removing carbon, then you know nobody needs to know. <laughs> I've had a couple of questions about why I've got insulation tape wrapped around my um, my wire on my Dremel. It's an extension. <laughs> this was a British Dremel originally, and I swapped it over to a European plug and made an extension. And I did it years ago, thinking, oh. You know, I was in the middle of a job, I needed my, my wire to be longer because the wire's never long enough. And I kind of did it quickly, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I've, I've just never sorted it out. I've, I've been meaning to do it properly for years. <laughs> it only gets used for 10 minutes at a time, so it doesn't really matter, but. Good morning. Now, before we get into lapping valves, there's a myth that I need to clear up now that the head's all clean and you can actually see it. And that is surrounding leaded fuel and lead additive. So there's a lot of people out there that think that two CVs were all designed to run on leaded fuel and they all add additive to their fuel. Now, the thing that you need to make any engine run okay on unleaded fuel is add hardened valve seats. Now, this is an engine that was built in the Paris factory. And look, it has, from the factory, hardened valve seats, okay? As far as I'm aware, all two CVs after 1961, I believe, are fitted with hardened valve seats. It may be the case before, but I'm only gonna tell you what I know for a fact. And what I know for a fact is every single two CV engine made after 1961 was fit with hardened valve seats, okay? Two CVs are absolutely fine to run on unleaded fuel. All of them after 1961. So all your two CV6s, all your Dianes, Ami 6s, Ami 8s, all of that stuff is absolutely fine to run on, on lead additive fuel. If you've been adding lead additive, you've been spending money that you don't need to spend. That's the good news. Now, I do suggest that you only run on premium fuel. Uh, in that case, that's 98 octane here in France and your car will run absolutely beautifully. Okay, so no lead additive, but use good fuel. Now we need to lap the valves. Lapping the valves basically means making this part of the valve fit against that seat that I've just shown you and make it airtight. Now, there is a way of testing it using oil and putting it under pressure and, and a perspex screen and stuff like that. We're not gonna do that. But what we can do is lap them in really well and have a good visual check and that gets them really, really close. And in most cases, if you do it right, you don't need to do the whole you know, red oil visual check thing with a screen and all that. So our first job is to lubricate the valve guides. That means dipping the end of the valve in some oil. And I'm just using normal 15W40s um, engine oil. And it's been sat in the sun, so it'll be very runny. Well, ah, all over the table. And come on, in your pop. There we go. I'm going to do one at once. Now, I've bought this valve lapping tool. I also need my valve lapping paste, which is in German. And I've had to, it's got two, two um, tins in one tin. It's quite cool, two lids. And it has... German on which is kind of the top and the bottom. So I've had to Google translate that. And I bought this valve lapping tool from uh, the 2CV specialist, CPRE. Now, I will say that it's too small. It's a bit pap, but we shall endeavor. It might be all right to do a, it's a high quality one, and it might be all right to do a 12 horse car, but they didn't have one in stock or listed on the website that's big enough to do a to do a 425 or even a 2CV6. Okay, so now we've lubricated the guide, what we're going to do is take the valve back out using our suction cup, and we are going to put grinding paste. Now, the reason the uh, grinding paste is in two tins, in one tin, is because there's like a pre and a, there's like a, a stage one and a stage two. I'm going to put it along this lip of the valve, and, and then we're gonna put it back in, and make it seat nicely into that valve seat. 
This is basically liquid sandpaper, but it's made with oil. Just gonna liquid it along the edge. Like that. And then we're going to pop her in. And we're going to press and turn and you'll hear it rubbing. Ideally your, uh, your tool would be almost the same size as your, your valve. But uh, it, that's not the case here. <laughs> Right, this is going to be frustrating and take a while. So, cut to me finishing the job. <laughs> One eternity later. So now it's some considerable frustration and time later, but you can really see the, uh, the difference that we've made. So, before I do the other one, I'll show you. Right, so can you see here, you have the aluminium, and then you have the beautiful valve seat where it's all clear, and then you have the darker metal behind it. Right, that's a really good sign. And can you see the exhaust side here, where this is all darker? Yeah, that was it. what it looked like before, and this is it after. And you can tell that's going to seal really nicely. And when you look at the valve, you get the same thing. Like I said, there is a test where you put your valves in, and then you put oil in, and you pump up the pressure, and... You put like a piece of uh, transparent plastic over the top and watch, see if the pressure drops and see if any oil leaks out. Uh, we're not going to do that here because I don't have the kit, but we don't really need to. This will be more than good enough because if you do it right and you do it enough, then it will seal. So that's just kind of a check rather than, and it's also, it's not like we don't have a ton of valve and a ton of valve seat to play with. If you had race valves where they're as thin as they can possibly be and you want to make them seal without removing or overlapping them because you can obviously lap a valve too much if it's a racing valve and it's like super, super thin and super, super strong, you can overdo it and that then would mess with your flow and stuff like that. On this engine, that's not really an issue. So. <laughs> Testing it in that manner just isn't really necessary because we can just lap it a little bit more and it'll and make sure it seals. So now we're all lapped in, and that is well, that cannot be overstated how important it is to lap your valves in properly because it's essential. It's the most important bit. Because up until now, what we've been doing is letting the gases in and out of the cylinder. But obviously, if it's not an airtight cylinder in that compression stroke then you're just losing power. It's like trying to blow up a bicycle in a tube with a hole in it. It's just not gonna blow up. You know, you can get some in, but you can't get it as blown up as you would if it didn't have a hole. So now we're all, and now we're all out of tight. Uh, what I'm gonna do is clean any remnants of valve grinding paste that it might be in with using brake cleaner and uh, paper. Because obviously that's like liquid sandpaper and that's, you don't want that in your engine. It's done its job and now it has to go. So, see, little tiny bits left. This will also get any tiny remnants of carbon that there might be. So, see, get in there. Get in there real good. And we did actually get remnants out because we've got dirty paper, so that's a really good sign. Now, the next thing to do, now we've finished using grinding paste, is of course to wash our hands, because we don't want to have anything on our fingers, and then we're putting a valve in, and there's a little bit of, just one grain of grinding paste, gets stuck to the side of the valve, that then gets put into the valve guide, and goes up and down for the next few thousand miles, and wears a nice little line, a little groove, and then we end up taking it all apart to replace our valve guides, and we don't want to do that. 
So what we're going to do now is reassemble the head, which is basically the reverse of removal. But because when you normally start your engine, it's been run before and it has a fine skin of oil over everything, a film of oil is the correct word, um, it, and that protects it on startup. Obviously, because we've degreased everything, there isn't a fine film of oil over anything. So what we're actually going to use gear oil because it's super sticky and a bit thick and we're going to use that as our assembly lube. Now you can buy specific assembly lube, which is basically the same thing. It's like a mixture between oil and grease, and it gives you a slightly smoky startup uh, the first time that you run your engine, but it means that everything's protected as it, as it starts to build oil pressure, basically. Like, out of the way so it doesn't get kicked over. There we go. It's that simple. That simple as we're both like... <laughs> All you can hear on the microphone is like <laughs> heavy breathing. <laughs> and you do one at a time and then that way everything stays separate. It's amazing how much muck there is on everything. But this is also because it's been in the workshop and uh, the head actually spent the night with the valves in it because it had been degreased in a, a bag with the other head and oil on it and then we've degreased it all this morning because obviously your valves are designed to have a skin of oil over, over them their entire life and because I left them overnight and they'd been degreased they would have been rusty in the morning the same with the valve guide so what we've done like I say I oiled them up and I put them in a plastic bag overnight So now what, what we're going to do now is pour oil down each collet. And what that will do is lubricate the collet on startup. Okay, do we have, where's my, where's my uh, darts? Number one, if I remember right, is the intake side. You hold it as far away from me as possible. <laughs> there we go. This is the point in the video where someone writes a comment about me not using a, a torch.
so much easier when you've got a second pair of hands. Right, and now the central stud that holds the rocker cover. And there we have it, two rebuilt heads. This is one I prepared earlier. Um, and for once on this channel, I've actually re remembered to do before and after shots. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with myself for just remembering to do that because I usually have to fudge it in editing. But I'm super, super happy with how they've turned out. We've got no wearing valve guides. We've got no wearing rockers. They came apart easily. They've gone back together beautifully. Our valves are ground in. We've got no carbon in the heads. Like this thing is really gonna run well and I cannot wait to see how it drives. As far as I know, in my, in my entire ownership of this car, it has never been quite right because the last owner did, um, what, 500 kilometers in five years? Like it, it's never run right. It never ran right when he had it and it's run well, but I, I like it, it ran really well so i can't wait to see how well it runs when she's all back together and she's actually right because she's been sterling like she's done such a good job up to now that when she's like when she's all pristine and has the right amount of compression and oh i can't wait um i can't and i cannot wait to make that video i need to think of something special to do for that video now the next job is going to be taking the taking the cylinders off the pistons, measuring the old ring gap, putting brand new piston rings on, honing it all up, putting it all back together again, and hopefully we'll have a fully rebuilt engine very, very soon. No, not hopefully, we will have a rebuilt engine very, very soon. So if you've been watching these videos and you've really been enjoying them, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. That way you get free teller every week in your inbox. You know, that little subscription tab, when you open uh, YouTube, yeah, it's in there. And it really helps me out, as does clicking like on this video and sharing it with your friends on social media and stuff. So thank you all for watching and sharing these videos. Please be awesome to each other, and I'll see you all in the next video. Go watch another video. Bye.